Hello, and welcome to the last lecture in this course. We're going to talk about tree maps and hash maps. Up till now, we've built a map abstraction. We've looked at how iterators work. We've created a linked list implementation of the hash abstraction. And now we're going to go and build a hash version and a tree version of that same thing. If you recall, some lectures ago, I read a Robert Frost poem. You know, miles to go before I sleep. Well, that's where we're at now. We're coming to the end of this miles to go, although, as you'll see, the end is really just the beginning of the next phase. And with a little foreshadowing, if you have been with me for a very long time, all the way since Python for Everybody, which for me was recorded a number of years ago already, this is the first complete piece of code that I showed you, and that was the code to count the number of words in a file by splitting them, then creating a dictionary, and then counting them. Now we're going to finish this lecture by implementing this in C. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So the idea here is we're exploring you know, different key value implementation alternatives. We're, we built a unordered Java-based hash map, which is like a Python 2 dictionary, if you recall, Python 2 had unordered hash maps, which meant you sort of ended up with your stuff coming out in a random order. It was the same order, but every time you inserted something, the order might change. Now, Python 3, they tend to, later versions of Python 3, they tend to be ordered, which are more like the list map that we did. We're going to have a, a map that is sorted, that's more like Java's tree map with an iterator, and it is sort of chapter 6.5 or section 6.5 of the book. Um, and it is a combination of a tree map and a linked list map. Um, but uh, Java doesn't have such thing, which really kind of surprises me. They got a tree map and they got a hash map, but they don't have a linked tree map or a linked map. So here we go. Now, these, these, the two abstractions, were, I mean, the two implementations we're going to build uh, kind of, you see them in Python, you see them in C++, and you pretty much see them in um, Java as well. But we're going to do our own thing. So I would say to you when you're writing this code, um, I, I don't want you to think that when I wrote this code that I gave you as samples, or when I wrote these slides, that it was easy for me. Um, the concept of trees and hashes are, are pretty straightforward, but then you got to solve the little problems of how to take the previous and hook it to the current and hook the next to the to the next, the current next to the next from the previous. And so you you got to draw pictures, and this is this is actual picture that I drew. I really wrote all this code from scratch. I mean, I didn't come up with the idea of a tree from scratch, but I wrote this code from scratch. And you can see that the like when I was building the the tree map. Um, my goal was to find the right place in the tree to insert the next item. And so you see I've got this 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. So I kind of constructed this tree that was right. It was in order. Um, and then I was trying to figure out where I might put 4 and where I might put 8 and where I might put 14. And then um, I kind of had this notion when I was writing the picture that I, you'll see I had the words lowest node greater than. And then I crossed them all out because that wasn't enough. And you'll see when we get there that I have the lowest node greater than and the greatest node less than. And I've got to get both of those things. And so as we work our way down the tree, we've got to keep track of this. I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Like many data structure programming tasks, they if you, you can draw the picture and it makes a lot of sense. You see the hash map, which is the first one we're going to do. That's really just nothing more than a bunch of linked lists the hash function picking the, the head. Instead of one head, it has, in this case, four heads. Um, so that one turns out to be easy, and that's the first one that we're going to do. But when I wrote this, I mean, I knew what I was doing. I knew what a tree was. I knew what a hash was. That That's the easy part. The hard part's writing the code. Now, taking the code from someone else, like if you're taking it from Python or C++ or Java, that's easy. Thank heaven they wrote it. And they tested it. And we have a nice, tested, working implementations. So you shouldn't have to write this stuff in most languages. And so we're just understanding how to write it. But if you do it right, you're going to make mistakes. 
and you're going to you're going to be 80% right but then it's going to be real hard to debug this stuff so part of what you need to figure you need to accept the fact that you will un, you're not likely to write it perfect the first time and debugging is difficult you're going to print out a bunch of like percent p's and hex values and stuff and you're going to just go through it slowly like what did i do wrong because the main programs for the programming assignments that I give you are really kind of like unit tests. They're sort of pushing your implementation to see if it's capable of handling all of the common situations. And so don't, don't stress if it doesn't work right away. They, my, my implementations didn't work right away. They, they failed. You, you can, you know, if you can go to some website and get the solution, I mean, if you're going to do that, just Go to Python and make a dictionary if that's your goal. Your goal is to struggle with doing something that you understand. You know how to do it. You know what a tree is. You kind of know that you got prees and nexts and lefts and rights. But you still got to write the code in making one or two mistakes and then fixing those one or two mistakes is essential to understanding. So with that, up next, we're going to talk about the hash map.